okay so we'll go into the story now and uh, so this story is, has uh, three what is that three actors okay uh, number one is uh, tapas pandey who is an electronics engineer um, hailing from dehradun and at the time of the story which was in 2015 uh, he was working in uh, in a semiconductor company in hyderabad uh, the second person is uh, dr nambiraj who was a hospital doctor in a rural hospital in a place called derwan which is almost midpoint between bombay and goa and the third is adarsha an electrical slash software engineer at that point working in lnt mumbai and these three people had not physically met each other and they met for the first time in a medical device innovation camp medic we call it in iit bombay in 2015 and dr nambiraj who is holding the mic he is describing a problem that he used to face Uh, when he was looking at patients in his rural hospital the patients would come to him and he would put on his stethoscope and then he would listen to the sounds and when he would listen to the sounds once in a while he would see a patient whose sound he would not recognize whether it's breathing sound or a heartbeat you know he is a young doctor you know and then he is not been trained and then his rural hospitals do not get that many large number of patients and even doctors are not there to talk to each other so if something strange happens they do not either have experience or someone to talk to immediately to figure out if something is right or wrong his problem was that if i do not know if it is critical or not he has to take a call should he send the patient to a bigger city district or a city hospital which means time and money to the patient and these rural patients do not like to go to cities to start with so he doesn't want to inconvenience them and make them pay for the whole thing until it was critical so he said instead of sending the patients to the city for a second opinion can i send the sound of the patient's chest breathing or heartbeat to the city that's the problem he is talking about and tapas sitting next to him and adarsha sitting next to tapas they said okay we would like to work on the problem and over the next four days they came up with this proof of concept they took a normal stethoscope put a microphone into that from microphone is a analog sound they put a analog to digital converter unit they made a circuit for that then they pushed that whole thing into a laptop from laptop to wifi to speakers in the hall of the where the presentation was happening and uh, tapas could put the stethoscope on his chest and everyone could hear his heart beats and breathing sounds and there of course the jury members also were there doctors and industry people faculty they all were very happy they got the first prize and then of course the person other shy and this dr nambiraj went back to their respective organizations back to their jobs they're all working professionals six months later both the person other shy gave me a ring saying that prof life is not very interesting anymore is there some way we can come to iit and work on the device or the idea and take it for the create a working prototype see if the doctors will actually like it or so on. i'm actually waiting for the phone call so they came to iit i put them as project staff now it's called as a project fellowships and i connected them to several doctors in fact the person in the center with the tie is dr uh, uh, lawrence uh, lancelot pinto at hinduja hospital one of the top pulmonologists in the country in fact you might have seen him in many of these tv news channels during covid times because he is a chest breathing expert breathing disorder expert so we put him in touch with uh, these people uh, um, tapas adarsha in touch with uh, him and many other doctors in many other hospitals in bombay and pune i told them simply this thing do not start any invention just go and study how doctors use the stethoscope all kinds of stethoscopes what kind of features are there how are they using that what are the issues do they have a wish list that stethoscope can do take 3 months off don't do anything else and that market immersion and observing and talking to the doctors for 3 months they came up with specifications of what exactly doctors want and doctors had their own wish list they said we would like to see whether we can enhance the sound and cancel the noise that was the number one requirement of doctors they saying we want to do noise cancellation because in india there will be auto passing or there is a noisy street next to the clinic or hospital we said we want noise cancellation and a little bit more volume control of the of the thing then they said it will be nice if we can record the sound and play back so we can ourselves hear the sound again or make it part of the health record and later on they said can we also uh, store the sound as a file and send it to some other doctor uh, so we can get a second opinion that's exactly what the first problem was 
And then they said, eventually, can we also see the sound, waveform? Can we analyze the sound? Okay. And all these together, they went from what was initial POC to this uh, prototype. And, uh, and what you see also is a beta prototype is almost the uh, first batch production, like five, 10 pieces. They gave the samples to several doctors and got feedback from them, further modified that. And what you see is a final product is a, the stethoscope module, which can convert any ordinary stethoscope into a digital or a smart stethoscope. And there's also a app which where you can see the sound file and you can of course store it, share it, things like that. And this, eventually this became also analytic software where not only you can visualize the sound, but also you can analyze the sound and you can get a first cut feedback about maybe it is a heart murmur, maybe it is a you know, wheezing sound of breathing and that became an additional support. It's like a second consultation for the doctor himself or herself. And uh, the initial idea was good. After creating the idea, they filed a patent and uh, this um, Eventually, they filed the patent not only in India, but also seven territories, uh, USA, Europe, multiple countries, uh, Australia, I think Japan, Singapore, and so on. Then they also applied for a government grant. It is called as, a, it's what's called big grant, because it's a grant is for about 50 lakh rupees or 5 million rupees. Uh, it is from a unit called BIRAC, which is a government organization as a part of Ministry of Science and Technology. So, and it's a very heavy competition. About 800 applications are received and only about 20, 40, um, you know, winners finally get the prize. So they got this 50 lakh rupees grant. With that grant, they started a company called as IU Devices. You can see the first team about uh, 15, 20 people here, but eventually they had another 15, 20 people, now it's about 30, 40. Um, I mean, they have design people, marketing people, support people, uh, all those. Uh, and then when COVID happened in uh, last year, they put a Bluetooth unit in this module. By using Bluetooth, the, the doctors or patients are able to do what is called as remote auscultation. What it means that the doctor need not be uh, bending over the patient because stethoscope has his earpiece and then the, the chest piece of the patient, right? Earpiece of the doctor, chest piece of the patient. Now doctors both are separated. The earpiece is your mobile phone and your headphone and doctor can be in the next, next door room or even can be at his home if they want later. And the chest piece can be held by a nurse or in some cases, a patient can put a chest piece himself, herself on their own chest. Even nurse need not be next to the patient and doctor can hear the, the sounds. And this, this became very valuable in COVID times because doctors, many doctors had their own comorbidities. They were uh, isolated, but they said, we want to help. Situation is so serious. Even though we are uh, we are having um, quar in quarantine, we would like to help by giving our services. And this became a very e valuable way for doctors to continue to serve other patients, even though they themselves are quarantined. And uh, and this became not only to, to verify whether a patient is serious enough to send to a ICU, but also in ICU, a patient is recovering and saying, okay, ICU beds are now very, you know, tight position, maybe this patient is not recovering on the way to recovery, we can put the first patient back in the general ward or you know, normal ward. So this was a very nice uh, innovation, an additional innovation during COVID time, which, which helped the uh, medical community. And these, they won many other awards also. There is something called as the India Innovation Growth Program, a 25 lakh rupee prize. Then they had something called as the Academia Industry Training, uh, which is a Swiss Next and DST Innovation Award of 10 lakh rupees. And they also won two startup summits. One is a Maharashtra startup and one is a Gujarat startup. And these awards come in terms of purchase orders for startup companies. This is a wonderful way of for government to support startups. Okay. The award is in the form of an order saying, okay, here is order for you know 10 lakh rupees and you supply stethoscopes to rural uh, uh, primary healthcare hospitals. That became a very nice starting point for these startups. And they actually, with those awards and other, other means, they went to many rural health camps. So you can see Bhavnagar district development officer, IAS officer, he got the local uh, doctors there. No, sometimes these gov pol political government people and medical people, the moment they say there's an invention in an academic institution, the track record is not so great. They don't really believe that. They, they don't want to even come to IIT to say that. They say, you come to our place and you demonstrate to end users that what you're doing is useful. 
and Adarsha is actually demonstrating his stethoscope to the PhD doctors in Bhavnagar uh, and uh, are organized by the, the DDU officer. And uh, they were so happy that morning demo uh, was completed. By evening, he had ordered for 10 stethoscopes. And then they, had a, they gave it another order a little later, once they were very happy with the whole thing. Similarly, in other places, they did. Uh, Shegaon, there was a major medical camp, Chandrapur, major medical camp. Thousands of patients got screened for uh, both uh, heart conditions and breathing conditions in these camps. In fact, one life was saved because as the stethoscope was being used, the doctor said that, I think I can feel a mild you know, heart attack coming up. They immediately called the hospital uh, ambulance and moved the patient to the hospital and uh, one life was saved. So these are beautiful examples of cooperation between not just academia and industry in terms of a startup, but also the medical community and the government because that came into big time into uh, supporting this whole innovation and medical rural camps and so on. Even In fact, an NGO also was involved in these rural camps. And so today they have, uh, this company has now uh, sales all over the country. In fact, they are now getting orders from outside the country as well. Uh, more than 3,000 units sold in the last two, two and a half years. Many of these sales are for telemedicine companies, which are connecting rural hospital patients to city hospital doctors. And um, multiple state governments have placed orders on these, these companies. And obviously, when in, someone does something like that, they become the darling of the press. So they have been featured in almost every major mainstream uh, newspaper, also in Forbes magazine. And more importantly, these stories not only give them more credibility with the community, medical community and, and the business community, but also they are inspiring many other young people to also think about what I mentioned to you, reinventing the, um, take a piece of product which is already there in the market and reinvent that using these new technologies and create a new market segment, if not add value to the existing market segment. Okay, so with this uh, short story, and I have one video which I'll show. What do you think is the most critical success, success factor for a story like what I showed just now or other similar stories? Is it that they took on a problem where there was a huge requirement, a huge market? Is that the reason? Was that that they came up with an idea which was such a breakthrough idea that everyone just jumped onto the whole thing? Is it that the team was very committed? Was it that they knew exactly what is going on, the domain, the medical domain, the requirement? the market, the price, pricing, you know, all those things? Or is it that they had some secret support from some lot of experts, mentors? Or is it that they had access to a lot of uh, facilities and funds which other innovators did not have? And you can add any other thoughts of your own. And don't say all of the above are true, okay? You have to pick one which you think it was the a most thing. critical success factor. So let me go forward and uh, show you how we do it and how this IU devices team has done that. What we do is we have divided the entire uh, process of innovation right from idea to impact across the four valleys of death into four, um, you can say, stages. Okay, uh, We call it as first stage as defined stage, defining the problem where doctor plays an important role. Then second stage is developed where a researcher plays an important role. That is what most of us do as academicians. And then third stage is where we get an entrepreneur, either a startup founder or an industry partner 
to test the product. That is very critical before you go to the final deployment, where you need funding to for mass production and marketing and so on, where investors obviously have to be there. What you have further done is to divide each of these stages into steps. So four major steps, team building, clinical immersion, problem definition, and then your concept evaluation, evolution and, and feasibility checking. And the develop stage is mostly about design and prototyping. Deliver stage I mentioned to is mostly testing in the lab first and then testing in the hospital. But for both of which you need to do a batch, pilot production of a small batch of products, which is not mass production. Because after pilot manufacturing and testing, you may change some features or design aspects and you don't want to invest in mass production at that stage. Only after testing is complete and successful, then you go for mass production, by which time you should have secured the intellectual properties, let's say patent, which can be filed in the first stage, but can be, you know, the final specifications securing can happen there. And then you create a business model which can be as innovative as your product, and then you find your uh, mass production, funding, distribution, and so on. The point to remember here is that um, you may start with a large number of, you can say, concepts, but by the time you reach the market, it may be much less. In our case, we have uh, now more than 250 concepts, a proof of concepts developed through this medic, medical device innovation camp. We also run a Medha, which is medical device innovation hackathon. We have done about, I think, about 16, 17 of those camps and, uh, and hackathons. And we have more than 240 proof of concepts developed, new and different uh, problems, right? Out of which we have now taken ahead 60 products in terms of making a prototype, showing it to the doctors, getting their feedback, and filing a patent onto them. But out of 260, about 30 have been licensed so far uh, to startup companies or industry partners. And out of 36 have reached the market already, like the stethoscope which I mentioned. Of course, many more will reach the market, hopefully, out of 30, hopefully 15 will reach the market in the next two, three years. But you can see the picture that not everything that has been done as a PUC level is reaching the market for various reasons. It could mean maybe it's not necessarily always that it's a poor idea. Sometimes the execution is poor. Sometimes the team gives up. Sometimes someone is not ready to finance that. Nobody is ready to finance that. So there could be multiple reasons why a device need not go forward. But it's important to keep the funnel right. You create a funnel so more than one idea can keep going through the whole thing. And just to put the picture back, so remember, this is how it went through the four stages of POC and prototype and product and an actual product in practice in the market. I'll go through greater detail for the defined stage, a little less detail for the develop and little, even more less for deliver and deploy. Because if you have a good start, a good problem definition, then you are you know, on the right path. That's very important. So I would rather spend time on that part. So let's start with the team formation. <clears throat> it's now very clear that if you're going to solve a medical problem, you need to have clinicians, which is doctors or medical experts or professionals in your team. In your team means <clears throat> they are actually working with you full-time, 100% full-time. If not 50%, if not 25%, if not one hour per day, if not at least one hour per week, if even that does not happen, then you cannot go forward. It's absolutely critical to have a, uh, someone with a medical background in that particular problem that you're solving as part of your team member. Other side, you also have engineers because engineers typically can create innovative solutions, design and manufacture. You can, so to understand the problem, you need doctors and you to solve the problem, you need engineers. Both have to be part of the team. Then the engineers in the team, including doctors, of course, uh, they have, you have to go deeper into the study of the, of the problem. First, understand the anatomy, medical terms, understand what is a normal organ state, what is a disease state, how do you, what are the symptoms, how do you diagnose that, what kind of a treatment procedures are currently available, what are the alternate treatments available, maybe a city hospital versus rural hospital, uh, allopathy versus maybe homeopathy versus maybe Ayurveda, maybe versus uh, Siddha medicine. There are alternative medicines, uh, medical treatment possible. Look at everything, do your homework. And then look at also what are the products currently available in the market. So look at patent study, look at your uh, websites of companies, product brochures, ask the distributors. All this homework needs to be done before you get into any, any innovation. Then also ask a lot of questions. We say that please talk to at least 100 people who either are having the problem or solving the problem or helping in some other way. 
it could be doctors patients patients family members distributors manufacturers 100 people don't start a project just by talking to one doctor or one distributor say this is a very important problem L understand what is a problem what is how do you know the problem is really there for a large number of people walk it research do validation find out who has the problem who has seen or studied the problem where does the problem happen you know where means home or hospital rural or urban whatever when does the problem happen and 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 when the problem is happening what is the person doing at that point of time why is the problem important and why does it impact the user or doctor or hospital or the or the or the industry and how does the problem actually occur and how it is currently addressed and ask why and how multiple times the doctor says i want a device to do that ask him or her why do you want the device they will say i want to solve this problem ask them again why does the problem happen they will say the problem happens because of this reason and many times you find that solving the root cause is far better than solving a superficial problem so ask why and how multiple times so we call it as 6w framework uh, of course it's 5w and 1h but we call it as 6w framework and then you get into the hospitals to look at observe the problems first hand okay and obviously you can't just walk into the hospital and tell the doctor i want to see a surgery you need to have prior you know notice intimation email phone call preferably with a, a friend who connects you to the doctor and if you are observing a, or a patient you need also patient consent and then if you are recording using your handwritten notes that is very easy uh, no one objects to that the moment you want to do audio recording or video recording even worse you have to really be careful about taking permissions because you are impinging on personal uh, privacy and what will you really observe look at how the diagnosis is done how how the doctors record the symptoms what kind of measures they take how do they conclude that a particular disease is there if you are seeing dr house or or a tv series like that you know exactly what i am talking about and then how do they go about treating the patient and how they also do follow up treatment is over but is a doctor calling on the patient saying come back after one week or one month and we let's talk again many patients don't even go back to follow up if they don't up follow up what how will the doctor conclude whether the treatment has worked or not worked and in all these things look at the devices what kind of devices are used uh, what can how does a doctor choose a device uh, what can, how much time the doctor is uh, is 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 taking uh, what kind of a skill level that is happening and if two doctors are using is there a variation in the time taken in skill level all these are observations and all this give you a very a lot of uh, inputs to reach this final problem statement and this is important please all of you in case you are uh, um, losing your attention just pay attention a couple of minutes this is really the starting point of your entire innovation or the critical step where it starts so you need to put your problem definition in one line we say typically in in, in 10 words or so is a good target and um, what does it contain we have four golden rules which we have followed and it has helped us a lot rule number 1 make sure a problem statement includes what why and who who slash where is fine okay which means what is the need and who are the target customers do not keep a statement which is vague if you say i want to improve the health health uh, of the patient it's a very vague statement make sure a statement is pretty precise so people know exactly what the problem is that you are trying to solve and then you should not point to a solution don't say i want a laser pointer to measure blood flow you, you may come up with a different way to measure blood flow so do not include a solution in the problem and also as i mentioned earlier go to the root cause by asking why and how multiple times here is a simple example so that you understand what i'm saying you know, let's say that we want to have a portable cabinet to safely store medicines in rural hospitals portable cabinet becomes the what part of the statement to safely store medicines is a why part of the statement and rural hospitals becomes a who or where part of the statement okay that's a good example from our point of view of a problem statement now that is not enough you also need specifications of the product okay you know when you buy a mobile camera or buy a computer you're looking at ram and your megapixels and your storage space and things like that this is something similar and what is important is that your mobile phone or camera may have 100 features but when it comes to critical specifications it is good to have single digit 5 to 10 in the opinion is a good number to have and what is it 
these are your need to have features not nice to have features don't say i want a pink storage box unless pink is really critical maybe you want to indicate that it pink is for babies or whatever it is so uh, so keep make sure that your specs are the critical specification and here are three golden rules again from my side one is minimize the number of function requirements or specifications as i said 5 to 10 is a good number keep the function requirements as independent as possible don't say i want a lightweight box and then say the box weight has to be less than 10 kg both are same things so keep them as independent as possible otherwise you are unnecessarily increasing number of function requirements and third state the function requirements as precisely as possible to be able to evaluate alternative solutions so let's go back to the same example portable cabinet if so i can break down the statement into three function requirements one is i need some storage space second is to safely store medicines i need some temperature range and then i need to be able to take it from one place to another place so maybe it has to be easy to carry of course you can come up with your own different specifications less or more or different but this is although these three frs are meeting rule number 1 and 2 they are not meeting my rule number 3 where i need to state it precisely if i say i need storage of roughly 1 meter cube or some other number i want temperature of from so and such so and so degrees to so and so degrees and the weight has to be let us say less than 5 kg then i can now start evaluating my alternative solutions okay so i got this two ways of looking at it problem statements and functional requirement both are equally important before you start looking at your design solutions now i am not going to give you a lecture on creative design thinking you already have been trained very well all we are all we tell engineers is that you know from childhood we have had this mental blocks in creative thinking some of you may have may not have but most of us have so i say that it's not easy to break those mental blocks so you either circumvent that or overcome that or dig under the tunnel whatever it is there is a good great solution lying on the other side of the block which is not enabling you to see the solution and so this divergent convergent thinking where you create a large number of concepts using some techniques like we use synonyms and biomimetics and brainstorming and many more techniques like that and don't mix up convergent and divergent thinking when you are creating ideas do not evaluate them and once you create all the ideas then you use some method like elimination method is there pug method is there weighted criteria method is there use some method to look at shortlist the solution and look at what you think is the best alternative to take it forward but this is important for uh, equally important for engineers many of us fall in love with a particular solution we try to say this is the best solution i am sure this will be a great market success story i say don't get emotional about your ideas don't fall in love with ideas put them through these four checks check number 1 is there really a good market need and don't say i think there is a big market go and tell me show me data verify market research when i said go and talk to 100 people that is one of the reasons why i said talk to distributors doctors you know uh, patients hospitals number two value proposition think about making something better faster easier less side effects and other things which you talked about 10 different criteria right don't say i will make it cheaper only okay first of all anything that you make it better faster easier has to be not 5 10% better but 5 to 10 times better because by the time your product reaches the market for all you know your competitors also have 10% improvement then where will be so you have to look at a breakthrough technology or a way of doing things that you can you can give a step a order of magnitude jump in in value proposition and never say that for the same features i am giving you at half the price or one third the price you can never compete on basis of price in medical domain because doctors and patients think if something is more expensive it must be better obviously a established company with a higher price they will go for it because they'll perceive it as a higher quality so you cannot compete based upon price only in fact i say that you say my product is cheap is a very cheap statement first you have good features and everything else and then you say okay my product is more economical or or more inexpensive or more frugal Or 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 more affordable. Use these nicer words and don't use cheap because cheap is a cheap word. Now, after that, the next thing to check is that is it feasible? First of all, do I have the right kind of a manufacturing equipment or or technologies or access to materials? If you're using some new sensor or materials, 
you need access to materials. For prototyping, you might have gotten a sample. And many of these uh, foreign suppliers, believe me, they will give you a sample very fast, almost free of cost. But the moment you place an order for 1,000, they are locked you in. They'll start negotiating very heavy prices. So this is a game of suppliers. So you have to tie in or tie up a supplier, a critical supplier of could be a sensor or a material before you actually go into mass production of the whole thing. So feasibility of manufacturing that within the, the target price and timeline is a very important thing. Otherwise, what's the use? And finally, do you have the right kind of a team, not just an internal team in terms of the design and manufacturing and quality and testing and doctors, what I mentioned, but also do you have the distribution channel? Do you have investors tied in? Do you have government support for, let us say, purchasing and putting in primary health care hospitals? So you need to have all these contacts also in place. You do not, if, it, if anything does not go through all these four checks, we mercilessly keep the idea on the back burner until all the four sides are taken care of. Okay, so that was a longer description about the defined part of the defined stage of the innovation. As I mentioned, I'll talk about other three stages also, but little less detail. So develop typically includes CAD modeling. You can do simulation now, and simulation can tell you whether something uh, like in this, this is a mega knee prosthesis for children with bone cancer. Instead of amputating their legs, uh, the doctors can open their legs, remove the entire knee joint with part of the femur and tibia. And this is a knee joint which replaces the, the physical knee joint. So, but as you can see in this picture, the red area near that uh, the vertical stem, the red area means there's a high stress. And high stress means that you need more material in that place to, to distribute the load over a greater area. So stress will come down. So it's possible to do simulation to, um, to, to avoid failures later on in life. And then, but doctors do not get an idea by looking at a CAD model. Even if you give a 3D CAD model, rotate, pan, zoom, you need to give them physical model in the hand. This is the first 3D printed, uh, this processes which you give to doctors and they would look at the thing, okay, this shape is good, bad, maybe you should increase a little bit, maybe increase curvature here. So they have very good feel with the anatomy. They'll be able to give you once you give that shape in the hand. And finally, you have to look at the manufacturing and uh, you have to think about what materials you have to put in. It has to be biocompatible materials. The materials should not cause, uh, you know, side effects in the human body, not poison the blood or create some other side effects. So in this case, for example, you can see that stems are made up of titanium, aluminum, vanadium alloy, which is a very bio-friendly, bone-friendly material. Bone can grow onto that. And if you put a hydroxy appetite collar, the bone grows even more better because hydroxy appetite almost is like a bone mimicking material. But the cobalt, chromium, molybdenum, condyle, which you see, and below that you see ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, that combination of materials gives you very low coefficient of friction. I mean, not as low as human body. Human body is God's design of, uh, of friction, very low friction at the knee joint. Uh, but this is like reasonably human made materials. We can't get better than that. But this combination of materials gives you very low friction as you move the knee joint. And then again, other materials on the other side of them. So you need to figure out what materials to use. And these are all very advanced materials. The manufacturing process is not easy. You have to have very high end CNC machines, very high, you know, the, the kind of feed rate and depth of cut, all these mechanical engineers in the room will appreciate that. It has to be very fine tuned for these materials. As you know, Tata Memorial Center is a part of the Department of Atomic Energy and you need uh, mega prosthesis implants and one of the crucial ones is in the, in the knee. So we decided to bring together Dr. Agarwal who is uh, interested in this but then we wanted a good mechanical engineering that's why we got Dr. Ravi from uh, IIT Bombay. And it was very clear that uh, it has to be a, a non-ferrous uh, metal alloy design. So we brought in the NFTDC from uh, Hyderabad, uh, Dr. Balasubram Maniam. And uh, this is an excellent example of how people with different competences 
can work together and then create a world class uh, product. Uh, when uh, Dr. Manish Agarwal uh, had met Dr. R. Chidambaram, the principal scientific advisor to the government of India, and that is when he shared with Dr. Chidambaram the fact that uh, he had a wonderful idea of a project with a lot of societal implications. Uh, we followed it up with a brainstorming session on medical devices and implants in the IIT Bombay, wherein we called all stakeholders. They were able to all brainstorm and come to the conclusion that yes, this kind of an implant or this kind of a process is, is a necessity in India. We were told that uh, we have to make an Indian prosthesis because uh, there were lots of patients who needed surgery. Chemotherapy had developed, bone cancer had become curable with the chemotherapy. After he's cured of his bone cancer, the only problem that remains is going to be mechanical or prosthesis related. So we needed an Indian prosthesis which was high quality but which was still affordable to our patients and that started our need. So TKP is not just one product, actually it is a system of products. We have the main device in multiple components, then we have surgical instruments, quite a number of them. And then we also later built a walking machine to test the joint for millions of cycles to make sure it is safe before human trials. Now the first versions of these were developed in AutoCAD lab in IIT Bombay. And later on they were taken over by NFTDC Hyderabad, who have done a fine job of improving the design we are making it by state of art, computer controlled processes using very high quality materials and elaborate testing mechanisms both for the input materials as well as for the final product. Above all, it has been tested in a knee simulator testing machine for over 10 million cycles. The whole 10 years life of the joint is tested out and the design was fully validated. And therefore, we are very confident that it would be a, a superior product and it would restore much of the natural functions of the knee joint. This actually has been an incredible process. Our Indian patients, they will get the best possible implant and the best possible treatment at almost one fourth the cost of what they have to pay uh, for getting this uh, important implant in their body for such a serious condition such as cancer. Let me tell you, share it with you, that once this project, this implant, sees the light of the day, this will be a, a great milestone achieved. My expert guidance was sought after for developing the instrumentations, for developing the prosthesis uh, and uh, I could contribute that this part is not correct and this part is correct. The good part of this project is that every three months we had a, a, a very sincere, devoted type of meetings uh, for, for the development of the prosthesis. So we all contributed towards it and we had a very positive outlook uh, as far as the project is concerned. Since I had some experience with the clinical trials and in India after the year 2012, there were a lot of changes in the guidelines and the law regarding the clinical trials and I had been giving inputs regarding those, you know, the laws prevailing in our country. It was a marvel of engineering which was to be implemented in human body. We had good achievement in first phase. We could make prototypes. They were good enough and they were comparable with the international standards as far as dimension controls, tolerances and finishes were concerned. We were able to develop further 
team of next generation of scientists and engineers. So a large number of uh, youngsters in uh, design, in manufacturing, in materials, and even junior surgeons uh, was, was developed over a period of time. We are looking at how we could uh, redesign some of the armamentarium which is used to operate upon and put the process in the human body as well as work on the packaging and making the whole product and the processes very user friendly and convenient for the doctors as well as convenient for the uh, systems uh, to take this thing forward. The seed of ArthoCAD, the TKP project which was sown in 2007-2010 with the first phase of the project has now grown into actually a big tree with many branches. This tree, BITIC or Biomedical Engineering and Technology Incubation Center at IIT Bombay with seven other institutions, engineering as well as medical across Maharashtra. They are now bringing together uh, many more doctors, many more innovators, many more faculty members from across different disciplines who are now developing many more different types of medical devices, affordable, reliable, suitable for the local population. Now we have at least reached the stage of clinical trial and hopefully in another couple of years we would have these uh, implants functioning well into our patients. And I want to see the day where I choose an Indian implant not because it is cheap but because it is the best implant in the world. And this is an example how we can bring together the exceptional capabilities that uh, exist in different organizations but they are complementary to one another and if you synergize them and then of course you are able to make uh, world class products. So here is one example, one more example of a, of a laparoscopic device. I mentioned to you earlier about the, the appendicitis operation through the belly button. So the doctor said that when we go inside the human body, most laparoscopic instruments have only one end effector. It can only grasp or cut. The, the, the doctor said, can we put a wrist at the end of the laparoscopic instrument? That will be great because it will give us more flexibility to do some more complex surgeries. So this was the first POC that we built. We said that, okay, we'll have a wrist, which is middle part, which you see right near the proof word. It is a wrist part of the thing, but it's a paper model. You can build a POC. It hardly costs you any money. Show it to the doctors and doctors say, ah, this is what I have in mind. And then you create a uh, 3D printed prototype. Of course, screws and all those things are just for holding the parts together. But we found a mechanism to activate the, the wrist joint also in this. And then, but you see the final functional prototype, which is actually batch produced, five, 10 units. But that was a nightmare. It took us almost one year to figure out how to machine, what materials to use, how to do uh, injection molding would have been very expensive. So we went for vacuum injection molding of 10, 20 pieces. Uh, some parts had to be laser welded, you know, it was, I mean, taking from design to manufacturing is actually a huge challenge. This, it, indeed, this is where we understood the importance and the also criticality of the third value of death from a research prototype to a uh, commercially viable or manufacturable product is actually a huge, a huge challenge. But finally, we crossed all those values and uh, this was, this is being tested by doctors in a laparoscopy training center in Mumbai and both doctors were very happy finally we licensed it to a company and the company is now going to mass produce and manufacture that. And a third stage of a thing is deliver. I mentioned this is critical because we are here to test it. And lab testing you do before you go to the hospital human trial. So you establish a reasonable evidence of safety in terms of biological safety, mechanical safety, electrical safety, and also functionality safety. Is it really delivering what you said it will deliver? And, uh, and then, then it goes to human clinical trials. That is where you really look at whether it is safe on a large scale. Is it efficient? Is it accurate? For example, a diagnostic device, it has, do not, you should do not want false positives and false negatives. And certification I mentioned earlier, based upon the risk class. This picture show you this knee process is being tested on the, on the walking machine first, then the doctors in the hospital ready with all the instruments. With the entire knee joint being replaced with our joint. In the x-ray, there's no bone. It's all just the human, the, the, the mechanical joint, uh, which provides this functionality. Students, you can see that the, the, the what Professor Ravi was talking about, that, uh, you know, like the high molecular weight polyethylene, that you know, anti-friction, that's plastic. So you can't see that over there in the x-ray. 
No, Ravi? Yeah, you're right. You're seeing a gap there, but it's plastic, yeah. so you're seeing a gap. But yeah. that's this high molecular weight polyethylene and it's fabulous material. And, and, and students, it's the same polyethylene material which you use for bags, but it's it's a different composition of polyethylene. That milk bags you come in your own house, the, the same material, but just look at the technology and the you know the, uh, polymer science which you know gives you uh, this particular white uh, you know like polyethylene which is high molecular weight. Now we look at uh, one more story. I'll show you and I'll show a video if possible. You have time. This was this was uh, uh, Anish Khan uh, from um, UP who actually was a polio victim himself, and he said that the the drop lock calipers which you see. They do not allow people to bend the knees during walking. Only for sitting, you just unlock the thing and then you sit. Uh, but during walking, it is a very rigid walking style and that's very difficult. So he said, can I create a low cost knee ankle foot orthosis, which will automatically unlock in the swing phase and lock in the stance phase. When you're putting the load on the leg, it should lock up. So because the whole point of uh, weak legs is that you cannot put load on the legs. That's the reason why you have this uh, orthosis. So orthosis takes a load when you're putting a load on the leg. But the, the dynamic calipers, which you see in the, on the right side, they're extremely expensive. Uh, they cost in lakhs of rupees. What he wanted is something which will cost a few, maybe thousand rupees or something like that, but give the functionality of, a, of an advanced uh, orthosis. So he created something himself. He was, uh, it's a long story, but uh, this picture is to show you that before we, actually started looking at uh, even pilot production. We took him to what is called as a gate lab, where they put these uh, white markers on his body and, uh, and the cameras all around the room. And the cameras pick up reflection from these, these small round markers. And you can recreate his walking stance. Now, this is not perfect stance, but is much better than a drop, drop lock caliber. This was the very first video that we did. Now the orthosis is far more improved. That his walking style is just maybe 90% same as a normal human thing. This is like maybe 60-70%. But compared to drop lock, drop lock, you cannot walk at all in that. It's, it's really bad. And then not only that, he, he went around the town. He talked to many people. Uh, you can see him in the exhibition showing it Dr. Kakwarkar. His wife, who is also a um, handicapped in a similar way, both of them demonstrating what they created. Uh, then he also won this BIG award of 50 lakh rupees. And we can see him getting an award from uh, Sudha Murthy and Nandan Nilikani. He got an Infosys award because of COVID. He went back to his hometown. He's, he's now fabricating his, uh, his devices himself at his home. The mechanically actuated knee ankle foot orthosis or miscafo is an orthotic device that allows patients with weak knees, due to reasons ranging from polio to injury, to walk with a natural gait. Now, let's take a look at how it functions while walking when the heel strikes the ground, the actuation mechanism is loaded which in turn actuates the knee joint mechanism, which can be locked at any angle in the stance phase, to provide stability while walking, it allows straightening of the leg, but prohibits buckling to ensure the safety of the user. The force wire helps in straightening the leg. During the swing phase, the mechanism allows free movement to allow the user to walk naturally. The miscaffle provides a good range of motion to allow activities like squatting. The knee joint mechanism is compact to avoid damage to user's skin and clothes. Enough with the theory, let's see the miscaffle in action. That is uh, your deliver part of it. Finally, we come to the deploy stage of things. What is required at this stage is that you need to create a file, a dossier of every possible information that is required for licensing to someone else. It includes your initial meetings with the doctors, your discussions with them, all the initial concept drawings and sketches, and eventually your bill of materials and simulation results and your analysis results, your manufacturing process steps, quality checks, ISO 13485 is equivalent of ISO 9001 for medical devices. Those requirements also have to be followed. 
And finally, any lab tests and human clinical studies that you have done, those results also have to be mapped. This whole file, this big thick file is critical for going to the next step, which is your, you, you, you map your IPR, whether you want to file a patent or a copyright or keep some as uh, trade secrets or, or anything else or software copyrights, you do that. But essentially remember that whoever files the IPR, intellectual property right, owns the IPR. So you need to have an agreement with the filing entity and the inventors, and you can name all those who contributed to the invention or idea. Uh, there has to be agreement between the, those two groups. And you can put in a revenue sharing. You can say that, uh, for example, in our case, we are doctors are very much part of the invention and we include their names as both as inventors to give them credit. And also in the revenue sharing form, because we feel that they ought to get a portion of the benefits of the licensing of the whole thing. And finally, you then license the IPR to some entity. It could be a startup incubated by the researcher himself or herself, or it could be licensed to an industry partner, uh, or it could be given to an NGO who may want to give it to a free of cost to the patients, or NGO may have donors. So the business model is quite can be quite different depending on how you want to take the product to the market. And let me say once again, as much innovation goes into your product design, as much innovation can also go into the delivery part or deployment part of the product in the market. There are so many ways to reach the product in the market. And uh, somewhere along this course, maybe someone will talk about this business model, which is called as a lean business canvas, where you, in one slide, you can put down what is your value proposition, which is the most important thing right in the center, but also start building in who are your key partners, who are your customers, who are, what are the key activities you will do with the partners? What are the key activities you will do with the customers? What is your customer dist your product distribution channel to reach the customer? And on the bottom, what are your costs and what are your revenues? This canvas is now pretty popular. And then when you actually make a presentation to a potential funding agency, they'll expect you to have worked out these basic uh, details. Okay, so we come to the end of third part. And we talked about in this case, this 4D innovation process, which uh, can um, give you a reasonable, we can say safety net as you walk the path from idea to invention to innovation to impact, okay? These four values of wealth, or from POC to product to uh, prototype to product to market or practice. And here I, I throw one more uh, discussion point for you. In case any one of you is interested in medical domain or healthcare sector, what do you think is a good uh, product line? Should you look at assistive devices? Should you look at basic screening devices, customized implants, diagnostics devices, surgical equipment, or hospital equipment? I mean, you can also again add anything else that you have come, you have in mind. But for you to think about in healthcare sector, what do you think is hot uh, for startups point of view? If you want to start something, where do you think you should put your thumb and look at that? Maybe an area I want to start a company. So at least a couple of um, diagnostic devices I can, uh, and screening. So screening diagnosis is on, on the, comes in one group, which is uh, interesting because it is good that I, you are saying that. I'll tell you why it's interesting in a single reason. You must have heard the adage that prevention is better than cure, right? So screening devices, especially mass screening devices, if we can develop in the country, and we can catch a problem much early, it is far more cheaper to solve a health issue like glaucoma, for example, night blindness. I mean, lakhs of Indians are going becoming blind because of some shortage of, you know, maybe a, a dietary condition, which can be very easily fixed if you know glaucoma is going to happen. Once glaucoma happens, it is blindness and it cannot be reversed. Like even COPD, like Dr. Pinto mentioned, it cannot be reversed. You need to catch these problems early in life. And remember also that for rural public and poor, poor patients, a disability can also mean loss of job, loss of income, and the, the family can become even more poor or destitute because of that. Yeah, uh, sir. Uh, hi, I'm Yuri uh, from MD Second Year IITH. Uh, so, uh, Vijay and I we did a project on Braille stamp uh, in our first uh, semester, a project under our Prasad. So, uh, our main concern was to uh, provide information that is on the uh, packaging of the medicines, like the expiry date and the manufacturing, because uh, once you cut the strip, you don't know the manufacturing and the uh, expiry date of the particular medicine. 
so also the blind uh, people they don't know what they're buying and uh, they can only trust uh, people on the face value like if they say this is this medicine and its expiry date is this so we worked on that uh, i don't know like how far uh, we can take that forward but uh, i was i just wanted to share that with you all about that great stuff no, that we did it's very interesting i think it's a genuine problem also you have to yeah. go and talk to the to the you know uh, to as i said 100 people who are in the problem but one yes, quick sir. quick uh, pointer let me give you immediately that uh, do check out uh, professor pvm rao at iit delhi has come up with a very low cost method of printing uh, braille information on uh, using some uh, plast some polymer processing technique which i forgot i think it's 3d printing plus uh, maybe vacuum forming or something uh, like that. very low cost you need to talk to the maybe blind association or uh, some some of those things and also low cost way to reproduce the braille information on packaging or whatever you are talking about so do that and then if you still need help just uh, connect back to us yeah, no? we are all there you know all right sir thank you <clears throat> okay thank you no good i'm glad to hear that